So I'd like to start off with a bit of an overview um, of how it works and then delve a bit into uh, the nitty gritty, if you like, of how it actually comes together. So we've done services projects for, um, I don't know, probably about three or four hundred projects all over the world. We've spoke with many different estimators and uh, we used to have an old system which is very, very database led and the more people we spoke to, they couldn't help getting away from Excel. They like the look and feel of Excel, the flexibility of Excel, but they do also appreciate the benefits of a database. So when we tried, when we came up with Vico Office, we wanted to make something which um, could satisfy everyone, if you like. So we meet somewhere in the middle, something which had the backup of a database, but was also flexible and looked like a spreadsheet. <clears throat> so basically, you see, in this area here, we take a 3D model. From that model, when we publish it into the software, we generate takeoff items and we generate quantities automatically from each of the uh, takeoff items which are identified. To each of them, um, we create a cost plan. And this isn't something magic. It doesn't mean that BIM creates the cost plan. The estimator creates the cost plan. We can use data from many different sources. You can manually input. You can go to a standard library of things that you may have to call upon, bring them in. You know, I've priced pile caps before. I'll bring a pile cap assembly from a previous project. Um, and you, you put your data together, and then you just use the quantities which are coming from the takeoff. So many people think that BIM will you know, eventually get rid of estimators. It just doesn't work like that. Um, this is a question um, or a statement that we got this morning <coughs> from a LinkedIn group from the American Society of Professional Estimators. And you know that sort of says it all. I wonder why people think estimating is only quantity takeoff when it is so much more. It's damn right. You know, I, I used to do it. Um, I was very skeptical when I came to Vico, uh, but wanted to learn more. And then the more and more I've learned and the more and more I've used it, I know how useful the tool is to make your job quicker and slicker, but not to take my job away. Okay, so these things that we're asking here, the crew mix, the work days, the environmental conditions, of course, these all need building into an estimate. But that isn't a reason to not use BIM as the way that you get the quantities to drive that estimate. It's just something which makes it quicker. So change um, in, the, in the years that I was estimating, I used to use a scale rule at first. And then we got digitizers. So gradually, everything's getting a little bit easier. Then that developed into on-screen takeoff on computers. And now we can use a 3D model to generate um, all the quantities required to produce the estimate. The one common denominator, the technology improves, one thing of change is each virtual estimator. Someone has got to bring all that useful data together and create a bid. And that will never change. So the way that we designed the software apart from the Excel look and feel, was to support a developing cost plan. Because obviously, you've got to create a cost plan from um, you know, back of a cigarette packet sort of information right through to detailed design. And just to get rid of an estimate at each point and start again is you know, pointless. So we wanted a system where we could take it right from its roots and develop it right the way through to its end. So if we have um, a very basic concept planning model, so we've maybe got area types, you know, the corridors, um, the program areas, the offices, the office space, um, you know, the different different parts of the building, different area types, we can allocate different costs to them on a square foot basis. And we typically do that by system, superstructure, exterior, enclosure, etc. And we can just input a rate per square foot same as you would do in Excel, same as you would do with very limited information. As that moves along, you get a schematic design which 
okay, they're not designed um, dimensions, but the design intent is known. So we know what sort of walls we're going to have, maybe, or you know, roughly what sort of foundations we're always going to have a slab. Uh, so you can start developing that estimate with what you do know, and this in tiered system. So now we've taken this foundations and substructure, which has a, a rate at the top, and then we start adding the parts underneath. Once we're happy that those parts underneath equal the scope which is included at this level, we would simply activate this assembly and it would then uh, compare the price from our build-up to our original um, one-line price. And we've got that flexibility of being able to see that comparison all the way through. So you can always track against your initial assumption and it's very easy to see and clear for everyone uh, and really good visibility. As you can see now if we go to a DD phase design development, now the, uh, the, the model has progressed in terms of we've maybe actually got design dimensions now and so does our estimate. So we know what type of reinforcement maybe, what sort of concrete, but we just add another layer, another tier to the estimate and then keep um, changing where the, what is driving the actual price. And then again, we go further down in detail and now we're breaking it down to the actual resources. And we can go right down to what we call a virtual mock-up level. Typically, a building model, you would never model to this level of detail um, for the whole building. But some areas which are very intricate, very difficult, you may take just a section of that building and decide to model it in detail. Um, so, you know, again, your estimate is developing as much as you want along with the design. That enables us to have a mixed level of detail models. Everything doesn't have to be at the same level of detail. Here we've got a full foundation model, but all the, subs all the superstructure is just being costed with square foot allowances at this point. And every time you've got something which can replace the square foot allowances, you just deactivate that massing model and your square foot allowances and replace them with actual costs from modeled elements. So in the software, in fact, I'll show you this now. Um, what I'm showing here is the model. Um, here are all the different models. Currently we can support um, Revit, Archicad, CADduct, IFC, and Tecla and bring them all into our system as a common platform so we can get uh, models from different sources and bring them all together and get quantity takeoff for them all. And so if we select, this is a list of takeoff items which are generated from the model and then if we open any of these we can see the different quantities which are available for estimating. Something I should say about the quantities as well, we call them construction caliber quantities um, many CAD systems already produce quantities and um, some systems utilize those quantities. They aren't construction caliber. They aren't particularly what an estimator needs. Um, volume may be a good one, yet yeah, we can use the volume. But if you wanted, uh, say, the formwork area of a column, so you want the vertical surface area, and you take what the CAD system calls surface area, you'll also get the top and the bottom of the column as part of the quantity, which isn't too useful um, if you want to be accurate. So we've developed our own algorithms, which we run on any of the CAD uh, systems models, which we import um, for the type of quantities which are useful for estimators. Uh, 